let's add some inventory capability to our block entity. Oh, all right. We find ourselves in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding some proper sided inventory, well, I guess capabilities to our block entity. Now this is, uh, shall I say, like a little bit more complicated than it has to be because mainly because of the get capability method over here and the site. But I will explain as we go along. So the first thing we need to make sure that is that in the item stack handler that we hopefully have in our block entity, we're overriding another method and that is the is item valid method. Now this in this case is going to return a switch statement and it's going to switch the slot over here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say k0 is going to be, let's say stack.getItem equals modItems.zircon.get for the time being. And then we'll just duplicate this. Then we have case one, we have case two, and then we'll also just get a default case, which is just going to call the super in this case. So super dot super dot is valid item slot and stack. There you go. In slot one, we want to be able to add a raw zircon. And then here in slot two, which is the output slot, we actually want to make sure that we can actually put anything in there. So we want to put in false actually. And there you go. So this is the is item valid method in the anonymous item stack handler that we want to overwrite. Just to sort of recap, let's take a look at the GUI one again, once again. So this is of course slot zero in which we can now put in a zircon. It doesn't quite make sense because this slot should be something where, you know, you can add stuff to tank over here. But for the time being, I want to make this a zircon because I basically want this in the next tutorial when we're going to add the energy stuff. And I want the zircon to also generate some energy just so that we have this as an example in this case. Then the raw zircon, of course, going in here should make absolute sense. And then in the bottom one, we can't actually insert our, anything ourselves. Only the, well, basically the block entity itself can insert something there, but the actual player cannot. And why do we want to have this? Well, we're basically going to use this in our, well, in a map for our craziness. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new class in the entity package. This is going to be the wrapper, actually the wrapped handler. And I will copy over the entire class over here. This is, of course, as always available to you in the description below. Get up a positive and individual just as well. Also very important. This is by Nuppy Nuppy from their libx library over here. License should be totally fine. So just make sure that if you're using it, that you give proper credit over here and then everything should be okay. This is just going to make this a heck of a lot easier. So what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to make a map inside of the gem infusing station block entity. Now I already have this prepared and I will copy it over. You are going to like completely, you're gonna fall to the floor if you see this and I'll try to explain it best I can and th that will just bear with me basically. All right, so we're gonna copy this over and you're gonna say, what the frick is this oh, insanity? And first of all, I agree with you. Second of all, there pretty much is no other way of doing this easily, sadly. Um, the general idea is the following. When we are inside of the get capability method, this direction here actually denotes the world direction that we're looking into. Okay, so because the issue at the moment is, or the, I mean, the one issue that we have to deal with basically, is if we sit down the gem infusing station, we're rotating it around, right? Via this facing property, we're rotating the actual block entity around based on the direction we're looking into when we put it down. Therefore, this direction here actually mismatches with the direction of the block entity because the block entity rotates and of course, you know, north is always going to be north. And this is the world direction. This with a little bit of a switch here is going to make sure that we're always using the same direction. We're basically normalizing the direction from the block entity to the world direction. So we're just rotating it around so that it matches up again. So then north is always going to be the top side of the of the block entity. And south is always the side that's facing you when you set it down. And east is always the right side. And west is always the left side. That is the general idea with down and up, of course, being the top and the bottom of the cube in this case. And then the wrapped handler here, what does that do? Well, we have two different... Uh, craziness over here. So in the wrap handler, we have a by predicate, uh, first of all, a predicate of integer, and then a by predicate uh, that's insert. W what does this do? Well, the first one right here, so this one, right, determines whether or not we can actually extract something from a particular slot. This saying, I basically is the uh, slot ID 
And we're returning, if i is equal to 2, then we can actually extract something from the bottom of this particular block. The same goes for the south, for example. So from the bottom and the bottom, I guess, uh, you can actually extract something from slot 2. That's the general idea. Then from north, for example, here, you can actually extract something from slot 1. Once again, let's remember, this is slot 1. You could e extract something if we're on the top of the, of the block entity, right? And then you can extract from slot 1. You can also insert into slot 1, right? Here you actually get the index as well as the stack that you're trying to insert into there. And we're just saying, hey, is this particular stack valid for this particular slot? This, of course, then calls the method that we have made right here. And this basically then makes sure, hey, can we actually insert this into the particular slot? Now, if this is still a little bit too complicated for you, there is just no other way of saying it, then there might be a little bit of more Java knowledge needed for this. Uh, while this is pretty crazy to look at and it might take, you know, a little bit longer for you to sort of completely wrap your head around this because uh, it actually took a lot for me as well because uh, this is not the easiest thing. But once you understand it, hopefully you're going to uh, sort of be able to apply this as well. Now, what do we do with this map? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the get capability method over here. And I will once again copy over the entire thing that we're going to need. We're basically going to replace this. And let's see. The first thing we're going to check is whether or not this side is null. Just in case. And then we're just going to, you know, give it the lazy item handler. And we're not even going to, like, do anything else with this. Then we're going to say, hey, is this side even contained in the map? Because, of course, what we can see, we have down, north, south, east, and west. But we do not have up. In this case, then what we want to do is we want to say, hey, you know what, the in the up direction, we don't even want to go into this. That's the general idea. Then we want the local direction. Now, this is the actual facing of the block entity. This right here, right, changes depending on what way I'm looking at and setting down the actual block. So this now we need to bring in alignment with this side. The way that we're first of all doing it is hey, if we're up and down, right, then we're just getting the direction handler get side. This basically only happens when we're down because up is not actually in there, but I've just added it uh, nonetheless. And then we're just getting the normal side because up and down always work regardless of how it's rotated. Because, of course, we're only rotating around the Y axis and then up and down are always the same. While when the other things, we actually want the local direction for default. This, this would be north, right, and then east, south and west. And we have to rotate the the side of the world based on the local direction so when we're when the local direction is north then we want the side to be the opposite so basically rotate around by 180 degrees and then when it's east we want to go clockwise south we just want the normal side and then when the local direction is west we want to rotate counterclockwise once again this is pretty much just a case, this was mostly a case of trial and error to figure out what exactly I have to put in here so that this works once again, I just can recommend play around with this, try it out. All of the code is available to you in the description below. This is sadly how, you know, complicated it has to be. Um, maybe there's going to be some other way that you can do it, but this is basically the best way that I found that this works. And this will now allow us to, well, I mean, use hoppers, for example, also all sorts of other mods, basically. And we're actually going to add another mod to our project over here to basically test this with. Uh, and we're going to add mechanism here because, well, I mean, I like mechanism and also it's it has pretty much everything we need for the co uh, continued stuff as well. So what we're going to do in the build.gradle file, we're going to first of all add the maven for curse forge. So this is this one, curse maven right here. And then we will add the following line and that is the runtime only fgd of and then curse maven mechanism. This is the project ID on the Curse Forge page. And this is the, well, basically the ID when you hover over the download, you can actually take a look at the, well, basically the number for the file, basically, that you want to have downloaded. And then you just go to the little elephant, reload Gradle. And once again, this can take anywhere from a few seconds all the way to, I don't know, maybe even a minute or so, depending on how fast your internet connection is on all of that. Let me just make sure what, uh, what are we doing here? We're at 247. I think this should work the um the ji version but we're going to get an error if it doesn't work anyway so that's going to be totally fine so if we have to change something there then we can do that after we start overall though this should be all of the different things that we need so once the gradle build over here has been run through we should be able to try this so you can see build successful in 31 seconds and in theory we should be able to try this now and this should now work this way like i said 
quite complicated when you look at it. I just suggest looking at it a couple of times, maybe rewinding, watching the part again, trying this out as well. This is in insanely important. Just try it out. Try some different values. Hopefully you understand it. And hopefully when I now show you it in the game, you now also understand it. So let's go into the game and see if it works. Or if I was in Minecraft again, and first of all, you can see mechanism has been added to this particular project here. So that's pretty good, but we can also use hoppers in this case. So let's just take a new gem, gem infusing station here and let's set it down. So this would be now the right side and this is the north side. So in theory, right, what we should be able to do if we take a look at this again, um, we should be able to insert into index one over here. So we should be able, if we put into this hopper raw zircon, it should insert into this particular actual slot that's perfect if we do it here we should be able to insert into this slot over here let's think about this again this is the east direction right uh sorry the west direction so left right the left side and we should be able to either export from index zero and index one and we can also insert into index zero and index one so if we put in to this right if we just get a few of those out there we should be able to also import here and because this is not valid for this it actually doesn't insert it into the this slot in this case if we put this in we can actually see it now puts it into this slot. So it works, works exactly how we want it to. Let's just do the following. Let's also try something like this. Let's get a chest over here. And let's try to, well, if I put in the, let's just put these in here again. And if I put a hopper beneath it, right? So this would be the down position. This would be this one right here. We should, we can extract the position two over here and we can't insert anything. So in theory, slot two, which is of course our output slot. This would be this one right here. We should see the zircons appear in this particular uh, chest. And there we go. They're being immediately taken from the hopper and immediately put into the chest. So pretty much also exactly how you'd expect it to. And then from the top, well, nothing works from the top. But we can also see this when we're actually using some transport uh, pipes over here. Uh, they are actually, where are they? There they are. So this is mechanical pipe. Nope, this is the logistic transporter pipe. There you go. So we can see it actually does connect here, but it does not connect there because there is no basically item connection in that instance. And we can also transfer it out from, well, this direction. So if we get a configurator and another chest over here, just so that it has a, let's just extend this a little bit. There you go. And if we were to open this up, then you can see now, the, these ones are actually being pumped out as well. So everything working exactly how you'd expect it to, exactly how we want it as well. And that's absolutely amazingly awesome. And it just is one of those things that is kind of sometimes, you know, really stupid to properly implement, but the, it's just going to, I mean, save a lot of headache for the player. And it's just going to be really, really nice if this is also added for your own mod. Like I said, can be quite complicated. Just play around with it, try out a bunch of stuff also test it inside of the world, then you get a more feel for it. And then hopefully you're going to understand how to do sided inventories for your block entity. Right, and that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah.